Praise the Lord, everyone. Thank you for tuning in with Dr. Leisha the Preacher. <laughs> well, obviously, I'm feeling kind of sexy today. Hey. <laughs> oh, wow. That's one thing about having feminine energy around you. Feminine energy has a way of just softening the mood, you know? Making the environment, the atmosphere soft and sensual and, you know, I don't know how men can live without women. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> I don't know why they take the risk they take. You know. Mm. I think the energy of women is beautiful. I mean, we're just so... We just know stuff, you know. We just... We're intuitive. We're spiritual. Spiritual. We're intuitive. You know, we're creative, you know, we're visionaries, you know. And we're soft, you know, we're soft. And, and I'm practicing being more feminine. I'm practicing being more soft. I used to, I mean, I was just. I realized, I think it was this morning, was it this morning or yesterday, I don't know, I'm 51 years old and I have never taken care of myself by myself before. I've never ever been an independent woman, meaning like I had to work to pay my own bills. I've been a wife since I was 20 years old, you know, and so when I left home, my parents' house, I went straight to college and lived in the dormitories, and from the dormitories, I did get my first apartment, but I was dating one of the football stars at the college, a football jock, so, you know, I didn't really have my own apartment, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> And then he married me, you know what I'm saying? So, and he was the provider type, you know. We started our own business and all that stuff together. And then after that marriage, you know, I mean, like, I went back to school between husbands and got a master's degree. Okay. Girls, no matter how sexy you are, you got to put some letters behind your name, okay? You still got to get an education. You got to have something to fall back on. But I've never had to fall back on anything until age 51. <laughs> so I'm 51 years old. And um, and so between husbands, I mean, I got a master's degree. And then um, right after my divorce, I mean, like a few months later, I was married again. You know what I mean? So I've never in my adult life, you know, had to work to provide for myself ever, ever. I am so clueless. <laughs> so no wonder I was trying to, I was suicidal. I was suicidal trying to avoid the unknown, to avoid something I had never done before. I mean, I was destined to do it. You know what I mean? Obviously. <laughs> Two field marriages, <laughs> marriage is not my thing. <laughs> That's why I got to be the pastor of my own church because I don't want, um, I need something that's mine. So whether husbands come or go, my dream stays alive. I need my dream to stay alive whether husbands come or go. You know, if you marry me, you know. You got to marry me just like this, as I am, as I am. A sexy Dr. Leisha the Preacher, and I smoke marijuana. 
and I'm, you know, I'm polyamorous. You know, I mean, I'm just, I'm just me, and I'm proud of it. I'm not ashamed at all. Uh, this is just a general reading right now, and um, just a general reading. No card has popped out, so I'm just gonna lock the deck right here. So today's angel message, Eos. The best is yet to be. <laughs> The best is yet to be. 51. And learning independence. I mean, I was just a very blessed and, um, you know, our family happens to have a little bit of, you know, generational legacy on you know home ownership and owning your own business you know we've had all kind of businesses through our family generationally wise you know what i'm saying we've had our own churches and stuff and it's our in our particular bloodline our lineage it's due it follow me to be the next one to open up a church it follow me and my children you know so it's a calling on my life from God and no husband no church organization no no laws there's nothing it's gonna stop God from opening up the kind of church that he is calling for in these days in these days he don't change God don't change but we sure as hell better change <laughs> In order to compel, he said to go and compel the people. He said not only call the praying women, but call the cunning women too. Cunning. What does cunning women do? They think. They they're real crafty. They know how to discern. You know what I mean? You know, they know how to interpret prayer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They know how to interpret the answer to prayer. Bam. Stuff like that. I mean, you know, we just different. Crafty. Compelling. I'm a crafty, compelling kind of woman. For the Lord, though. For God. I do what got to be done. I get the job done. I help develop, create force, demand, alpha males. Men that lead are drawn to me. <clears throat> and then they have to go and go do the job. <laughs> go do the job, go lead. <laughs> go do it. You know, but it says the best is yet to be. Good things have happened, but even better things will be presented in the future. Good things have happened. I've had a really good life. A really good life. Someone's at the door, but my roommate's um, answering. Good things have happened. I've had a really good life. I mean, when I say I live like a princess life, you know, princess in Detroit life. <laughs> you know, I lived a princess life. I did. A life of being in the spotlight, you know, very young. Um, having a career very young. Understanding business since very young, you know understanding home ownership very young you know I was the rent collector in the family one of the rent collectors <laughs> you know kind of thing you know you know when your family owned rental properties and somebody got to go get the rent you know I was if you if you wanted to drive a car in my family you had to do something <laughs> you couldn't just have a car you had to in my case collect rent plus I worked I worked my own job 
at a, a pharmacy as, as a technician. <laughs> But even better things will be presented in the future. I've risked so much to a degree. You know what I'm saying? It was really not a risk because it was an assignment from God. God assigned me to a family. And I raised that family. And I did the best I could where I stood. And where I fell short, I tried to compensate as best I could where I stood, you know. And I've tried to apologize for my shortcomings, whether those apologies were accepted or not. You know, I can't control that. But what I can do is just keep on apologizing, keep asking forgiveness, keep on forgiving, and keep on moving forward with my life. You know, I'm 51 and independent for the first time ever. I mean, it didn't really dawn on me, you know, what that really meant. I have never, ever really had to be on my own and provide and take care of myself. Even though I, you know, manage an entire family empire. I call my family like an empire. For real, for real. My family is like an empire. The way I run it. It's an empire. You know. And it requires the power of the Holy Ghost to maintain your family's generational wealth you know your family's legacies any businesses that can survive and we have one that's going into the third generation I lift up a touch of tent in Jesus name a touch of tent in Jesus name just make it wealthy Lord make it generationally wealthy a touch of tent And Lord, I pray that our family create another family business. We, we need one more, Lord. One more. I know it's in there. A family one. And I pray that this opens the door for it. Dr. Leisha, the preacher, just swings open the door to generational wealth. For not only my family, but any family connected to my family on any level you know in Jesus name I pray because you know what the best is yet to be the best is yet to be and God has a way of preserving friends for you he'll create some friends for you that you didn't even realize was there <laughs> you know you might run into somebody a time or two and then out of the blue at the right time, they're right there. That's just how God works. Especially when you're angels, you know what I mean? I don't know about y'all, but I think I'm an angel, okay? I mean, I just happen to be a sexy angel, you know? But I really do believe I am, you know, mankind, of course. I'm mankind. I'm spiritual, I'm emotional, I'm female, but I also feel that there's an a angel component to me as well that allows me to endure suffering on levels that most can't. Even the people that I suffer for cannot suffer for me. <laughs> and it's okay we're all different if the people that you suffer for can't match your suffering energy it's okay okay it's okay everybody has their own measure of faith everybody has their own measure of suffering everybody has their own measure 
their own self to manage. And we have the Six of Wands and the Ten of Cups in reverse. <clears throat> the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. So that means we're not quite there yet. We're not quite there yet. You know, we've had some good experiences. We've had some great memories. And it's not that you have to forget it. Because, you know, I don't really believe in just forgetting stuff. I, I don't really function that way. You know, I believe that my past, present, and future is always connected. That energy exists eternally. Okay? And I, at any point in time in my life, I can go and make adjustments in my past, my present, and my future. Because an adjustment in one area is an adjustment in all three areas, like the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Consider your past, present, and future kind of like the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you know? And this is just a regular reading. This is not a Trinity reading at all. But, um, so just, just, you know, open your mind up where you can travel within your own life as you see fit. That's what I do. <laughs> it may sound crazy and that's okay. That's probably why, you know, I live, you know, so many states away from my family <laughs> and kind of isolated and alone, you know, to a degree, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because I have these kind of thoughts, you know, crazy people are often isolated. Um, the mentally ill often end up homeless, you know, because if I can't maintain this independence in the projects, you know, with low income, you know, with low rent, if I can't pull it off because my mental illness might disrupt my neighbors or, you know, or something, you know what I mean, then homelessness is my next step. Because I am one of those people, I refuse to let my mental illness disrupt my family. They're all intact and happy, you know. Maybe not like happy, happy, but you know what I'm saying, they're intact. They're well supportive of each other. They got each other, you know what I mean? So, so that's one layer of what's going on in my life. Of course, there's layers to that. You know what I mean? There's layers within that. But overall, that's what's going on. So here in my world that you share with me, you're in the world of Dr. Leisha the Preacher on street level. Street level life. You know, meaning that I've hit a type of rock bottom, you know, like a phoenix bird, you know, I think I may have mentioned that before, you know, you crash, you burn, you rise from the ashes and become something beautiful, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, something beautiful, and so I'm on my way, I'm on my way, I'm rising, I'm rising, and I still have a lot of of the world on me, you know. I still got a lot of worldly ways. I do. And God will remove them as he see fit because he's the only one can do the rising. Only he can do it. And I have enough faith to let him. And I ain't gotta rush him. I ain't gotta let the people around me bully me. I'm not going to let the people at church rush me, bully me. Mm -mm. I'm one of them kind of people, I just keep it real. I love going to church and I'm going to keep going to church. And right now I still smoke weed and so I might leave church and you might see me at the, uh, the liquor store buying some blunts. I'm not a drinker much, you know. I like a little wine, but I'm not an alcoholic. Nothing like that, you know what I'm saying? 
But if you see me at the liquor store, I'm probably buying some blunts because <laughs> I do smoke some weed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, I'm just trying to keep it real. And at this point in my life, I don't intend to take membership up with a church, even though I intend to attend, you know, enjoy the services and pay an offering and that kind of thing to support the community and keep my you know, I like to dance, you know. I be getting into it, you know. I like to speak in tongues. I like to shout. And I like to scream. I'm a screamer. <laughs> I'm a screamer. And it's okay in the kind of church I go to. All that's normal. Stuff that other people want to put me in a mental hospital for. <laughs> you know what I mean? People think I'm crazy. <laughs> but at this church, all that stuff is normal. That's just what we do. So there, I'm normal. I found a place where I'm normal. And it's two blocks from my house. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? So anyway, back to this reading. The best is yet to come. But in the meantime, people will be turning on you. And the only way for a breakup to occur, you got to have a reason to break up. So sometimes people get kind of creative to help the detachment get going, you know. It'll seem like a person is lying on you. They lying on me. They know it didn't happen like that or blah, 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 you know. But in order for... In order for victory to happen, in order to get to the other side of your separation, in order to get to the other side of your divorce, you got to get through some bullshit first. You got to, you know, you got to have some conflict. You got to have some drama. You got to have some arguing points, some debatable items. <laughs> Otherwise, why break up? If everything is smooth sailing, then stay together. But obviously, everything is not smooth sailing. So it's gonna be some lies or some drama or some conflict or something. Something has to take place to get this breakup, this divorce or whatever the hell you're going through to end, to get it over with. <clears throat> And you're going to have family problems. So the best way to avoid family drama, unnecessary family drama, the people who are separating or divorcing, the best thing to do is go no contact with everybody. Both of you. Whoever's married to each other, whether it's two people, three people, you know, if you're polyamorous or whatever is going on. There's a lot of polyamorous people. One breakup tends to be a ripple effect. It seems like when one of your relationships break up, they all break up. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, and it's real dramatic when that happens. When all your relationships end at once. I mean, it's like death to the tenth power. You know? So, you know, while you're headed to the separation and divorce line you know expect some arguments expect some accusations and some lies and deception and expect some shit to happen expect disagreement otherwise go no contact with anybody related until it's over and the dust settles once that happens then, once the dust settles, then, you know, you will have smooth sailing victory. And then the family can, you know, have a sense of normalcy. You know, before you get your happy family back, you got to go through the divorce process. So the best way to avoid 
to avoid ruining and destroying your own family, go no contact for a little bit. That's what these cards are saying, and you guys saw it come out. So the bottom of the deck, let's go bottom of the deck. The King of Wands. Only the men in the family can take a stand and make this shit go smooth. Women tend not to be able to pull it off. Women tend to be able to tend to be the ones with the the bad reputation, the one that's disrespected, the one that the kids don't listen to the most. You know that kind of thing. So unless the man, the head of the house, unless he takes lead, there will be no peace. Only the man can bring peace in the home. Only the man can make the house be happy. And how and why? Let's see what's underneath there. Well, until the star, until until that you know what, well, hold on, let me look that up. Hold on. Yeah, until you get your mind right. <laughs> yeah, men. I had to think about this. I'm like, wait, you know, men, until you get your mind right, you, you know, you, the family can't move forward. Men, get your mind right so that the family can move forward. How do you get your mind right? You need to pray. You need to pray and ask God for the Holy Ghost, for the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you. you gotta pray. I'll see what's behind there. I say a pray. But yeah, y'all gotta get your mind right, men. Get y'all mind right. Get your mind right. Because when you get your mind right, then that'll be peace. You know, see how the horse look peaceable. You know, he looks victorious. And then it means the family is happy. You know. You know, communication is smooth. The divorce is over. Everybody know where they stand. All that division and all that gossip and all the rumors and... You know, all the battling and all that. It'll just go away. But you got to get to the divorce line. You got to get to that finish line. The final line. Final done. Remember, pinky finger, no going back. We are not going back. We get into that finish line. But men got to get their man right. Because... Until you get your mind right, your money ain't going to be right. Your money ain't going to be right. It's like you're going to be working for nothing. You know, everything you put your hands to. You know. You know, it's just going to be cut short. It's just not going to. Everything you put your hands to, it's just not going to yield to nothing. It's like you're going to be working for nothing. Who got time for that? Y'all see me just pulling the cards. I'm not making this up. I'm just pulling the cards. And, um, you need to just step back. It says step back. You need to step back. Go no contact with, with your spouse, with your wife. Go co no contact with kids. Go no contact with family and friends. Go hermit mode for a little while. Go within. Pray. Remember, get your mind right. You know, and you're going to have to plan. Start planning the divorce. Plan. Take advantage of the time you have. Two, three, four months or whatever you got. You know, a month, whatever. Take advantage and plan. Think. And then things will get back right. Think things through. 
go no contact. Stay away from everybody. Don't bring the family into your drama. You know, things will get peaceable again. This is what the cards are saying. Things will get peaceable again. Your money will get right. But you're going to have to resist drama. Resist the drama. Don't turn the kids against their mother. Don't do that. And moms, don't turn the kids against their dads. Don't do that. Because it's better when the family is happy generationally. Because you want to get the money. Because when families split up, then that messes with the money. It also messes with the strength and unity of the family. But when you keep the family together, that increases the family's potential for generational wealth. I'll just look on top of the of deck too. See what I said? You need to go in hermit mode, but when it's... Yeah, you need to... Yeah, until you figure some shit out, nothing ain't gonna work right until you get this figured out. Things are not gonna flow. You know, it's just not gonna flow. And really watch your pockets. Watch your pockets. Watch your pockets. Um, how many minutes? 31 minutes? Let me burn a little.